Dose definitely brings the party. There's a lot of powerhouse garage rock tunes. A lot of the songs are definitely reminiscent of their side project, Foxboro Hot Tubs, and the band even said themselves that this technically could be the second Foxboro Hot Tubs album. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way first. One of the first things I noticed when I was listening to Dose was the reuse of some old riffs. And I was starting to think, wow, these songs sound vaguely familiar. And then the more I listen, the more I'm like, yes, this sounds, what does this sound like? And I'm going to go ahead and throw out the examples that I'm hearing. Yes, it makes me feel like there's a little bit of originality lacking, but really, uh, it's overpowered by the awesomeness of a lot of these tracks. Now, the first one that I noticed was the similarities between Lazy Bones on Dose and Give Me Novocaine from American Idiot. Now, with these songs, I want you to just kind of listen and compare. See if you hear it for yourself. The riffs and Give Me Novocaine, uh, it just sounds like Lazy Bones sounds a little bit faster, a little bit faster version of that song. The chords are very, very similar. Now, the next one would be Make Out Party. Now the riffs from that song, just go ahead and listen to East Jesus Nowhere and just sound, doesn't it sound like they've just been mixed up a little bit? The chords are in a little bit different order. Okay, now listen to Baby Eyes. Compare that to Christian's Inferno from 21st Century Breakdown. I'm just going to point out one more here. Uh, Stop When the Red Lights Flash. The opening riff, does that not sound to you like the part in Homecoming from American Idiot where he starts to sing, well nobody cares, does anyone care? Hmm? Listen and let me know in the comment section down below. Keep in mind, these are just some things I noticed. You might not hear them. Maybe it's just me. I love the fact that Dose is not just a continuation of Uno. It's not just a, a, like a step forward and just like another collection of songs that sound oddly familiar to Uno. It's definitely got its own feel to it and its own vibes and its own musical style. Now, whereas Uno was focused more on, I guess you could say, pop rock, Dose has more of a raw and garage rock feel to it. And musically, for me, uh, a lot of parts on this album, I can go ahead and just say that I feel like this is the uh, modern-day, non-political American idiot in terms of how the album sounds musically. A lot of the guitars and the sounds, the drums, the solos just kind of take me back to 2005 when I first heard the album American Idiot. Uh, especially on songs like Lazy Bones and uh, Wild One. It's just like, wow, this sounds like kind of not too retro, but it's definitely got a vibe that throws me back to kind of my teenage years. The lead single from the album, Dose, is called Stray Heart. The music video is coming up for that very soon, but uh, the way Stray Heart is done, it's a very 60s influence song, and it's kind of irresistible, you know, honestly. It's got some great guitar work. It's definitely going down as one of my favorite songs of 2012. It's grown on me more and more and more to the fact that I just absolutely love that song. The guitar work on the album is quite good, possibly even better than on Uno. Billy and Jason really teamed up here and did some amazing stuff, emanated some amazing sounds that, you know, at times you don't even expect. Uh, the solo on, like, Wow That's Loud is crazy. Uh, Wild One has a great solo as well as Lazy Bones and just it's very consistent guitar work and even like the riffs on uh, Lady Cobra sound incredible and just very powerhouse feel to a lot of the guitar work and musically very very solid. The band did step outside of the box at some points on the album. I can honestly say I've never heard a song like Make Out Party from the band. Uh, that song has a very cool party feel to it with an incredibly sexy bass solo on it. Uh, Nightlife is one that I've also never heard anything like. It's got some rapping from the artist Lady Cobra, and at first I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this. Rapping in a Green Day song and just a guest vocalist in general on a Green Day album. It's a very dark and uh, kind of different song than anything Green Day's ever done. And, you know, I've come to the point where it's not like my favorite by any means, but I do enjoy the song and like it. It's got an incredibly cool creeping bass line that Mike plays and it's just very powerful and adds a lot to the song. Now there are a couple of tracks on the album that I'm not too keen on, but I don't dislike. Uh, Ashley being the first one, the song just starts so abruptly with an exclamation of Ashley and the chorus is just kind of 
kind of silly and repetitive and it gets a little bit on my nerves at times. Uh, the guitar work is very solid. I'm not going to discredit either of these two songs that I'm going to talk about musically by any means. Uh, that's not the case here. I really do enjoy the backing vocals from Mike on Ashley. It really adds a lot to the song and I'm just going to go ahead and say that uh, Mike's backing vocals on the entire album really add a lot to some of these songs. Baby Eyes is the next one that I really didn't enjoy too much. I mean, it was closer to the bottom of the list on my favorites. The boys have stuck to their formula for the most part in terms of uh, song structure, uh, with most of the songs featuring these awesome guitar solos, and some people criticize the fact of Billy's songwriting here. They're saying, why is a 40-year-old man writing, he's sitting here writing a song like Make Out Party? Well, A, I believe that he's either pulling from personal experiences from when he was a teenager, from, you know, he was young at one point, he was growing up, or else B, he's pulling from today's youth culture and what he sees and hears about in uh, popular media and stuff. So it's not, you know, the worst thing in the world for him to write a song like Make Out Party. And yes, it does seem kind of juvenile, but I mean, at the same time, this album is a part, kind of the party album, and it's to be expected that a song like this appears, and it's definitely one of my favorites on the album. It's very creative, and Billy's lyrics as a whole on the album, you have to give him credit. A lot of them are extremely creative, and especially on songs like Amy. Now, you're probably surprised that I haven't talked about the song Fuck Time yet. Uh, a lot of people were hyping this one up just because of the title, and honestly, I was kind of excited about it too, just because, yeah, it's fuck time. And, you know, I'm, I do like the song, but I'm kind of on the fence about it. I don't exactly love it, but it's not like one of my overall favorites on the album or anything like that, but I do enjoy it, and the chorus is very solid, and it's fun. It's a fun song. Let's go ahead and move on to my favorites from Dose. Stray Heart is the first, the single that I already mentioned, up-tempo, 60s-influenced song, awesome bass and guitar work on this one. Lazy Bones is my next favorite on the album. It's influenced heavily, I feel like, by Give Me Novocaine from American Idiot. Uh, it's got some awesome guitar riffs that, while they are similar and familiar, they're powerful at the same time. And the guitar solo on that one is incredible. I love the lyrics on the song, and I like the part I thought it was really cool where it kind of stops and you think, oh, the song's over, and then it just slams right back in. As a whole, I feel like Lazy Bones is probably the most memorable song on the album, quite possibly. It's between that, Stray Heart, and Wild One for me in terms of my overall favorites, but Lazy Bones, I feel like, has the best chorus overall. Wild One is my next favorite, and I feel like it flows perfectly right out of Lazy Bones into Wild One, and it's just a cool little explosion of guitars, and as a whole, that song gives me a really cool, awesome vibe. It throws me back to kind of what I was talking about with the whole 2005 American Idiot thing. That's the kind of vibe I get to it, and in uh, terms of music, and the way it sounds, you know, at least the guitar work, and some of the vocals. Uh, the solo is quite amazing, if I don't say so myself. I really, really love the way the backing vocals are kind of thrown in during the solo. It just adds a lot to the song. While wow, That's Loud is my next favorite. It features some guitar work that I've never really heard from the band before, and it sounds awesome. It's very, very loud. You never would have guessed that from the title, would you? Yeah, of course you would, because it's loud, it's in your face, and it's rocking. My next favorite is Amy, and that's a truly moving song written for the late Amy Winehouse, like I mentioned before. Um, if, like I said, if it doesn't make you feel some sort of emotion, it makes me feel very sad, and just it gives off a sense of sadness, questioning, and just yearning. Yearning in the sense that, you know, you know, Amy, Amy, don't you go. The way he sings that, I can't, obviously, I can't imitate that, I can't do it right, but just the way Billy sings Amy, Don't You Go, and just some of the, w the way the lyrics are written on this song make it a powerhouse acoustic song that's definitely going to be one of Green Day's most memorable songs in their, in their catalog. My next favorite is Make Out Party. It's a very fun, upbeat party song. It's got a really fun chorus, and it's got an awesome bass solo. Lady Cobra is last on my list of favorites. Uh, it starts off with a laugh, presumably from Lady Cobra herself. It's got some awesome chugging 
uh, power riffs that kind of just go throughout the entire song and just that's what kind of makes the song a powerhouse it's just the fact that it's got so loud in terms of guitars and the riffs the way they continuously repeat and cycle throughout the song plus the song has the line do you want to play a game of twister like a dirty old man with a babysitter so as a whole is dose better than uno no i don't think so as a whole uno stands taller for me in terms of an entire album while at parts dose does rise above uno and uh musically lyrically but not as a whole i find myself enjoying uno as a whole whereas dose is more pick and choose for me at times like in terms of songs i'm going to be listening to years from now i feel like there is going to be more from uno than there are from dose dose is getting a 4.5 out of 5 from me I want to know what you guys thought, obviously. I know there's a lot of Green Day fans, so I'm very excited to hear what you guys have to say. What you think about the album? What are your favorite songs? Billy Joe, if you're in rehab, get better. The fans love you. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe right here on your home for music news and reviews, Album Review TV.